This video is all about the common features between each vertebrae. There will be other videos focusing on specific unique features for each section of the vertebral column. This one we're going to be talking about the commonalities. One of the biggest things as a student is that you're going to get a bone box and when you open it up and dump everything out you'll see all those bones. Not sure what any of it is. So when we look at the vertebrae, collect them all up and we're just going to show some of the highlighting features here. To be able to separate them, the cervical region, if you look, you'll see it's got three holes there. If you look at vertebrae and there's three holes in them, known as foramen, then you know you have a cervical vertebrae in your hand. For the other ones that don't have three holes, give them a little turn and have a look at them straight on. And if it looks like a giraffe or an anteater, then you're looking at a thoracic spine. If you're looking at one that looks a lot like a moose, so uh, it's quite thick and squat, and it's got short little snout, and it's got quite a large, thick drum at the back, then you're looking at a lumbar vertebrae. When we look at all the vertebrae, they all have very similar commonalities. They each have a vertebral body, and the vertebral body is this drum-shaped one, and it's on the anterior portion of the vertebrae. So if you imagine taking these little bridges and sawing them off and just holding this one piece, that's the body of the vertebrae. Thoracic spine has a body. And lumbar spine, what makes it so unique is that their body is very huge, very big, very thick, and strong. The other thing that you'll also see is if we move from the body to the other side, the body is anterior, the spinous processes is posterior, you'll see that they all have spinous processes and they just stick right out at the back where the spinous processes start to split when we move more anteriorly into that Y shape, that's the lamina. And here's the lamina with the thoracic spine and the lamina here of the lumbar region. When we keep moving more anteriorly, now you're going to see these little pieces that stick out both superior and inferior, and they're known as the superior articulating facet and the inferior articulating facet. When we look at those articulating facets, that's what connects to the vertebrae above and below that helps give us movement. So when we look at thoracic, superior articulating facet, inferior articulating facet, and lumbar, superior articulating facet, and an inferior articulating facet. And there's one on the right side and the left side. If we move more posterior, we will get to these transverse processes. Transverse meaning in the transverse plane. We also have transverse processes in the thoracic spine, transverse processes in the lumbar spine, and they're very important because that's where muscles attach. In the very center here, we have the vertebral foramen, and the vertebral foramen is where the spinal cord lives. When we stack all the vertebrae up, what we end up doing is the vertebral foramen creates that spinal column where the spinal cord lives. To review the commonalities, all the vertebrae have a body, all vertebrae have spinous processes. All vertebrae have laminas. All vertebrae have a superior articulating facet and an inferior articulating facet. And they all have transverse processes. And a vertebral foramen. That's our review of the commonalities of the vertebrae.